Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. It is crazy early in the morning, the sun is just coming up, and I thought I'd do a video today before I went to work. And uh, last night I was playing with watercolor and ink again. I really enjoy making these kind of thumbnails. I call them thumbnails because they're just tiny little experiments with watercolor, and they turn out so unique. And everyone is kind of completely unpredictable. You don't know what you've got till you pull the tape off and there's nothing more satisfying than pulling the tape off. Um, so I, I did some experimental colors with some browns and blues, which is what I get drawn to. This time I added a little bit of green. I also did some more spring-like colors. So you can see it's just droplets of um, a different watercolor colors. And then I add ink stamps. I might do a little sketching, some dots, Anything that your heart desires, you just really have fun. And it's a great way to really loosen up and uh, approach watercolor with a lot less stress. Because uh, watercolor can be very stressful for a lot of people. Um, it's a very unforgiving medium in a lot of ways. Once it's down, it's down. But uh, if you just let yourself kind of have fun experimenting with watercolor and uh, trying this little exercise with whatever color palette you're drawn to, uh, you're going to see that watercolor has some excellent and most beautiful effects. And uh, there's several ways you can play with watercolor. So this is going to be a very loose approach. Uh, it, I have other videos as well where I've played with this technique. So I just love doing it, so I thought I'd do another video. Uh, and then you can take those little, uh, little snippets like this, these little thumbnails I call them, and you just add them into your journals and they create these really beautiful little, tiny little works of art in your journal. And uh, this little mini journal I made, I just love adding little pictures and little surprise watercolor pieces in there. So whoever's receiving the journal can really enjoy it being a very unique little mini work of art all through. So anyways, I thought we will, I also think I have a video on these as well, which I will try and remember to link. And I'll link a couple of other videos where I've done this technique before as well, just to give you some other ideas, because I've used other stamps or I've used drawings. You can draw first, you can ink first, just, there's all kinds of ways. But for this one, we're just going to go straight into the watercolor. So what I've done here is I just stuck a piece of watercolor paper down. Uh, do I have the pad? Here it is. So this is the watercolor paper I'm using. It's just from Michaels. It's their brand, Artist Loft. It's 140 pounds, um, 300 uh, grams and nine by 12. So it's, you know, a medium quality to low quality watercolor paper. It's great for this kind of experiment. I wouldn't use my arches on this you know, your super high-end stuff. Just just a cheapy watercolor paint, uh, paper, sorry. But not too cheap. You do want watercolor paper. You want something absorbent to really absorb these watercolors. And then I use a washi tape. Um, I'll stick these, I like to do kind of different sizes. Um, I do have some used washi tape that I stick to the side and reuse as much as possible. Just because washi tape can be kind of pricey. And you can use it several times in this technique. You don't have to peel it off and throw it away. So I'll stick these long ones down first. And then this also gets um, stained as well, the washi tape, and you can reuse it. So you can see there's, there's paint on this as well. So you can reuse the washi tape in other ways when you're done these techniques. So you get a little bit more bang for your buck on your washi tape. Sometimes the washi tape peels as well. Sometimes it leaks, it's all part of the charm. Just do your best to stick it down. So we're just gonna do a couple here. So I, I do a crisscross in the middle and then I go from there what sizes I want. Okay, hopefully that sticks down. So my watercolors are a mess, as always. So I have uh, two that I use. Uh, this is my Windsor Newton Travel. And this is my Mei Liang 48 color set, I believe. I don't bother using the palettes in this case, so I'm not gonna bother cleaning them. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna be in the frame or not. Hopefully it is. And I have a, get my paper towel. I have a number 10 round. 
a watercolor brush. So what I like to do is I'm going to dilute a few of these. Now you're gonna see some color in this because my water is dirty. I forgot to change it before I hit record, but it doesn't bother me. So I'm going to wet a few of these, saturate them. Leave a little couple of pools on there. I know it's a bit hard to see on the camera. And then I'm gonna go into the colors I want. So I'm gonna go into, I'm not gonna list all the names. I've lost the legend to this palette, but this is kind of a pink apricot color. I'm gonna throw some of that in there, really wet it, get it going. And I'm just gonna drop it in. And you can see I move fast. I don't wanna overthink things. I just wanna drop the color in. And that's the beauty of this technique is you don't have to overthink anything. You just go for it. I'm gonna wet these ones now. And maybe I'll leave these four dry and try a different approach on those ones. So let's go back into some of this color, just a little, and let's go dry into these ones. So it's a wet on dry that I'm doing here. And I hope the camera's picking up all the colors. I'm wondering if I'm actually in shade on this side. It's a new setup that I have. I'm upstairs in my new studio, but I'm still kind of laying things out a little bit. So it's a, a kind of hit and miss on these uh, filmings right now. You'll have to bear with me until I have it all set up. So now I'm gonna go into this blue. And I believe this is most likely a phalo blue, but don't quote me on that. You're gonna pick what colors you like. Things that you're automatically drawn to. So I'm very rarely drawn to purples. Uh, it's just not a color I like to use. Now I love to wear purple, but I don't like to paint with it. Don't ask me why, it's just strange like that. Actually, I'm gonna go into this green too. I love this green. I'm gonna throw some green in here. So I'm pretty much gonna roughly do a similar color palette that I had done before in the ones I just showed you, just so you can kind of see how they came about. And I'm literally just rolling. I see my hand does this, I'm rolling the brush and I'm gonna let the paint do what it wants. Now remember watercolor paint does dry much lighter than when it's wet. So let's see what color I wanna go into here. I'm always drawn to browns. So this is probably a probably a sienna here that I'm using, burnt sienna. And I just saturate my brush and maybe drop the color in, let's see, over top. And that's the magic of watercolor, is you don't know, until you get really familiar with paint, this paint, you don't, the, the reaction that it has uh, to different colors is really fun to watch. So some colors can repel each other, some colors absorb each other. Uh, there's a real kind of science behind it. And I just love that about watercolor. I think I'm gonna go a little bit, a little bit brighter with this, I love this pink. It's kind of like a fleshy color. throw more of that in. So the dry, the wet on dry is kind of fun too because you're going to get these very sharp edges which can create some really unique looking patterns. I like to make sure I get all my edges. I think we'll go a little bit more saturated on that green. Don't be afraid, just go, go for it. Be bold, throw that color in. Go really strong on the color. This is completely experimental. That's the whole idea behind this. Maybe some yellow in this one. Whatever colors, maybe like orange, just some orange in there. We'll go with this orangey tone. Into these kind of apricot colors. Let's see what happens. Sometimes it's also nice to leave some white patches, get some kind of really unique um, white patches going on here. So I'm gonna dip into a different blue on this one. 
leave a little bit of the paper showing through. So you can see how it puddles. Uh, that's really fun too. So you can add more water, a little puddle of water, and then drop that color in and just let it dry and see what it wants to do. So I do tape all the way around to help, because it's a cheap paper, it's going to bow. It's going to um, kind of distort the paper. And I didn't stretch the paper first. Uh, stretching is where you would wet the paper completely and let it dry and it kind of helps um, stop the paper from warping. Uh, I, I would do that on a high quality paper. I wouldn't do that on, on GP paper because I'm too lazy. <laughs> and because I'm taping it down and these are just individual little things I'm going to cut up later, I'm not overly concerned about it being bowed. So I think we could do another fun pop of color in these ones. What color should we pick? Let's see. Should we do like a vibrant pink? Let's see how we feel about a vibrant pink. Like a, well, it's not overly vibrant, I guess. But it's a little bit of color thrown in there. Maybe a little bit in here, just kind of Easter colors, aren't they? And again, I just draw, dropping it in. My brush never stops. I don't, I don't want to overthink anything. I find if I, I stop and wait and watch, then I'm going to overthink. And then I start stressing myself out. I just want to throw that color in and let it do what it wants to do. So it gets kind of muddy. That's okay. You can always use your paper towel too. If you find, okay, I don't like that spot. You can create a new technique, uh, a new look by absorbing that back up. And then maybe some splattering. I love splattering. I like splattering while it's wet and while it's dry. So you can see how this color is pooling in here and it's gonna create this really neat um, look when it dries. And I just love that about watercolor. Now, if you don't have watercolors, not everybody does, you can water down some acrylic paints, do the same thing. As long as you have an absorbent paper, you can just have fun with this technique. You can use inks if you don't have paint and you only have ink in your repertoire. Go ahead and use some ink. Go into this blue, this intense blue. Just calls to me. And this time I'm just gonna dab it in and let that wet paint decide what it wants to do. Okay, so the hardest part about this is being patient enough to let it dry. That's my biggest challenge. Not very easy, but through the magic of video, I'll be able to do it. We'll see you when it's dry. Okay, so we're back and it is dry enough to proceed. So let's, uh, let's have some fun with these. So before I peel the paper off and embellish a little more, I want to just stamp a few places. Now you can stamp after you pull the paper off, but I try to keep the edges of the white clean. Um, but it's hard to kind of gauge what, you, what you're working with while the tape is on there because it's such a distraction. But I'm going to use my trusties. If you've watched me before, I use this a million times. It's my favorite stamp. It's just an illegible type of cursive writing. Uh, it doesn't really say anything, but what it does do is it creates some really beautiful textures. I'm using a uh, slate gray, I believe it's called, slate gray from uh, Close to My Heart. It's a water-based dye ink. So if I were to add water to this again, the ink would dilute. So just be aware of that. If you wanted to say, ramp up a color, uh, use some permanent ink and that way it will not uh, run on you and get all muddy. So I'm just throwing this stamp in and you'll see I don't ink the whole thing. I'll just ink a little bit. You can, you know, put a full impression over the whole square, whatever you want to do. There's no wrong or right here. This is totally just having fun with your stamps. Here's a butterfly stamp. I'm just going to try and ink the top and I don't want a full butterfly. I just want kind of like wings poking through. I'm not upset if I get more than one butterfly on there. I just want to add, again, the impression of the butterfly. 
So here I might add the full butterfly, just the corner wings, just something like that, just for fun. Not again, not using the whole stamp. Uh, let's add one more here. So um, I think I'll try this guy. This is just a set I got from Value Village again. Uh, it's just my acrylics. I don't know, premium tag borders close to my heart again. So I just tend to look at their um, crafty sections and if there's something I like, I'll get it for, for cheaper. So you can use just parts of this. I don't, I rarely, I rarely use the full stamp. Again, I just wanna add some textures before I pull the paper off, the tape off and see if there's anything else I'd maybe like to add. I like the little swirly bit on the end of this stamp. So I'm just throwing it in, just tapping it down in different places with thinner and lighter ink, stronger ink, less ink, just having fun playing with my stamps. Okay, so maybe we'll pull the tape off and see what we've got. So when you pull the tape off, you wanna pull pretty slow, even though it is washi tape, but this is relatively cheap paper and it can rip. Oops. And I take my washi tape and I stick it to the side of my table. Now you can also add it to acetate so you can reuse it. And the more you, like I said, you reuse it, the more grungy it gets with the paint on it because it will dry on there. Even watercolor will dry on it. Um, and then you can reuse it for other, other projects. Really fun. Get as much out of it as you can. Nice little in focus here. So you can see how they start to come to life a little bit. And now, you're, now you can see a, a much better perspective of what it is you're dealing with on these little thumbnails, but aren't they cute and charming? I just love them. I just have so much fun with them. I mean, this would be a really cool technique to use on a card as well. So you can paint, tape it off on a bigger section for, you know, a birthday card or whatever, whatever you might want to use. But it's a really fun technique. And again, it really makes you loosen up with watercolors. So if you are nervous of watercolors, I strongly recommend you try doing this. Get familiar with your paint. Get familiar with the way you hold your brush and the way your wrist moves and be loose. Do it quickly, challenge yourself. You know, when I took fine arts years and years, a long time ago, I hate to say how long, uh, one of the exercises we did was we had to paint something in like 30 seconds. So set your timer, 30 seconds, put paint down, 30 seconds, put paint down, or 10 seconds, or whatever. And um, really kind of force yourself to go for it and just make yourself put paint down without thinking. So now um, I take a Micron. This is a 03. This is an archival and a waterproof ink. So if I were to use this and then re-wet with some more watercolor, this will not run. This will, this will not. So it's nice to have a little bit of um, flexibility of, you know, items in your repertoire that, that you can play with. Um, so we can just do some doodles now. So I like to draw very thin with my black marker. So I, instead of drawing like this, I'm gonna draw on the side so very little ink comes out because I don't want the, I don't want the image to be too overpowering. This is very dark and I don't have a lot of black in here. So I wanna keep it very sketchy and I'm just gonna sketch some leaves in. So you can see there, it's just very sketchy. So if I were to use my pen um, straight up like this, I get a very black line, which I don't wanna do. I wanna keep it thin because these colors are very delicate. So maybe I'll do, make sure your paint is dry, one like this and we'll do something going this way. Again, very loose, not overthinking it. I'm just putting a little, little something in there, a little interest in there. This one's a bit wet still, so I'm gonna stay out of that one. Uh, maybe I'll do something in this one. So I give myself my stem and then maybe a couple of wonky leaves. 
You can also draw flowers in here. So maybe this one will do some, we'll do a little flower. So I start with the middle. Again, very thin lines on the black and do some petals. And then a stem and maybe a flower going off this way. There's the center of my flower. And I, I think I have some videos on how to do these little flowers, how to draw them to make them look a little bit more three-dimensional by drawing them on the side, drawing them facing you. So here's the center. And then maybe a bud coming up off this one where it hasn't fully opened. Some leaves. So you can see all the elements we've used the watercolors, the stamping, and the ink all create layers of interest. And then you can take it a step further by adding more layers. So let's do this one. Let's just do something very simple again with these leaves. There's something really charming about this loose leaf that I really love. Just have one fold over on itself here and another long one here. So then you can go into say, uh, where is it? A Posca marker. So this is an acrylic marker. Uh, I really like these because they do tend to sit right on top of watercolor. The only thing that bleeds through them I've noticed is ink. Ink bleeds through everything, which also has, you know, its own charming effect. You can pull out the leaf if you want by coloring it in white. Again, more texture, more interest. Just, you don't even have to fill it all in, just a little bit. And just adding these dots, another element. You can add stripes. You can do whatever you want with these little. They're just so much fun to play with. I'm not gonna do them all, I just wanted to show you how I make these. And then maybe go in, maybe do some black dots. Who knows, whatever, whatever you want. You know, you just keep playing and then you can cut them up. I just chop them up into little pieces. Make sure they are dry. Make sure your Posca is dry and your paint is dry. This one's still a bit wet, so I'm gonna leave him aside for a minute. And then they're ready to just staple into a journal. And they're so adorable. I just love them. So I put them on my desk. I have a collection of them that I keep in my little container here with all my goodies, all my stuff that I'm ready to use. It's a bit messy right now. Um, and then what I would do is I would take just a pretty little piece of elastic. Oh, here's one already. And I just tie that around them. Tie that around them. And then they are ready to use in a journal when I need them. This one has numbers stamped on it. So whatever stamps you have, the more texture, the more interest. So I hope uh, that gives you some fun ideas. Again, play with the color combinations that you want. So we went a little bit more blue-green on this one, soft. A little bit more Easter colors on this. I'm really drawn to these colors, but maybe like reds, pinks, purples. No wrong or right on this. I hope it gives you some ideas. Please hit that like and subscribe button and notification to follow me for more videos. I hope you enjoy this process, guys. Have fun. Take care. Bye.